Here we go. Welcome again. And what do you think of Brent Peterson? <laughs> He's a nice guy. <laughs> He's a great guy, actually. Brent is a great guy. Good friend of mine. <laughs> I understand you maybe. You were talking about even catching up, going to a concert. Oh, yes. We, we planned one last year. Yeah. Um, it didn't quite work out. I think it didn't fit his schedule or something like that. But we did plan to go to one together, one of these Yusundur he concerts. He's a Senegalese uh, artist, isn't he? He's a Senegalese artist, Yusundur. That's right. Yeah, yeah Yusundur. He loves Yusundur, and we exchange CDs. <laughs> he sends me some, I send him. <laughs> oh, okay. that, that's terrific. Yeah. Uh, since we had a chance to chat, but you know, gosh, uh, uh, three years ago. Yeah. Uh, much has, has happened in the ICC, and you talked a lot mm -hmm. about that today. Yeah. Are there things in the ICC which have not happened, which maybe uh, uh, kind of a uh, you anticipated would occur that hasn't occurred? Sort of the, well, I hate to say use the term disappointments, but yeah. you know, expectations that weren't met. Well, um, I, I. I, I have to say that uh, pretty much uh, the, the things that have happened in the ICC mm -hmm. um, over the past uh, few years since it became established, I think is much beyond expectations. Ah. This, is, this is what I would say. Um, I think first of all, we were thinking of having a referral, you know, or not having one, but having a referral and starting a case. Mm -hmm. And this is something that uh, even the big, biggest optimist used to say that it's going to take time before it happens. And then you find, you see Uganda and Democratic Republic of Congo and, and, and Central African Rep Republic all referring cases to the ICC mm -hmm. in, you know, very, very fast. And then you saw that encouraged or, or sort of... Uh, Established the credibility of, an, of the ICC to, to a certain extent. And next minute, what you saw was uh, the UN Security Council referring a case to, to the ICC. That is the, the Darfur case. And uh, then there was this debate again of when the prosecutor is going to use his proprio motor powers. Mm -hmm. Because then you, you, you find out that we had a referral from a state. You know, we have a UN Security Council referral, and maybe the only other w um, mechanism to trigger the jurisdiction of the court was the prosecutor using his proprio motor powers. And now he's done that mm -hmm. in Kenya. He went, he sought authorization, and that has happened. Also, even a, a, a state making a declaration accepting the jurisdiction of the ICC, we see that has happened already in uh, Cote d'Ivoire. Mm -hmm. has done that about a couple of years back and now Palestine has also done that. So all of the, the areas that we were thinking would be a problem for ICC's jurisdiction to be triggered has come to pass. Yeah. You know, so I think this is uh, really uh, beyond the expectations of even you know, the biggest optimist. And again, we have issued arrest warrants. Okay. Some of them, about nine of them, are outstanding, mm -hmm. but at least four have been, you know, executed, and uh, these people have been surrendered to the court. But also, we have issued summons to appear. We have made requests for summons to appear, and not arrest warrants. And this is in the case of the three rebel commanders in the Darfur case. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the last thing that we expected to see happen at the ICC was someone voluntarily appearing. Yes before the ICC, and this has happened. Abu Ghattah voluntarily appeared before the ICC to answer to the charges, you know, in response to the summons that was issued. Likewise, Jerbo and Banda, so all three rebel commanders have come to the ICC to, in response to the summonses that have been issued against them. So, you know, I think this is, this is something over um, since 2002, and I would even say 2004, when effectively the ICC really started to work, I think this is a big, this is a big thing. So, all of those things that we were expecting will take time, right. may not even happen. It has has now happened at the ICC. Be the legacy of those types of of courts. Mm -hmm. I I think. Um, 
First of all, we need to commend the ad hoc tribunals, mm -hmm. you know, um, and, and, and courts and the various hybrid courts, because I think they have uh, um, contributed a lot mm -hmm. to the jurisprudence of international criminal justice, you know, in, in, a, in a very significant way. And when it, any time I, I, I talk about that, I, I think of, you know, sexual and gender crimes mm -hmm. and the evolution that it has. Um, we have seen during the time of the ad hoc tribunals. We, and a, 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 ca a case that always comes to mind is the Akayesu mm -hmm. case. Mm -hmm. So these are legacies that have found their way into the statute of the International Criminal Court and have been codified. So their contribution can uh, in, in no way be, be, be regarded as, you know, insignificant, right. because I think it's great. And, and I dare say that it led to the establishment or the quick establishment of a permanent court. Uh, but we see with the ad hoc tribunals this problem of uh, what do you do with them, you know, after their term runs out? What do you do with legacy issues? You know, what do we do with the records? What do you do with the archives? And, and, and all of this. And I think you are really not faced with similar problems when you have an international, mm -hmm. you know, criminal court. So this is uh, one advantage that a permanent court, you know, has. Because it's an ongoing thing. It is there, it's established, and all of these problems that you, you face in winding up an ad hoc, uh, you know, tribunal will not be faced by the ICC. Another thing is about the limitation geographically of the jurisdiction of, of those courts. Because as, we, as you have seen, in the ad hoc tribunals, whether it's Rwanda or, or Sierra Leone or whether it's uh, uh, Yugoslavia, geographically they are limited in their mm -hmm. jurisdiction in what they can do. And this does not, at least to a certain extent, does not apply to the ICC. So, and also, having a permanent uh, court existing I think the reaction to crimes, you know, accountability will be quicker, mm -hmm. you know, than with the ad hoc tribunals. Because if, a, if crimes are happening, a court is already existing. You do, not, you do not need to set it up, you know. So all of these things, I think, um, of course, it's a good thing. And I will not, uh, as I said, I will not in any way say that it wasn't a good thing to establish the ad hoc. It was fantastic. It's done a lot for international criminal justice. But I think that the, the, the decision of the international community, uh, the wise decision of the international community to establish the International Criminal Court was also a good thing for international criminal justice.